y'all, this is insane. My heart is pounding. I'm shaking because this fish is so big. How about a little free range coffee and some deer sausage to start the day? <laughs> Better go ahead and hit the like button. Y'all, I slept so good last night. I can't even tell you. One of my best nights sleep I've ever had in the outdoors, period. I, the mattress pad or the, the sleeping pad that I had, game changer just made it so much more enjoyable. Perfect camping weather, it's a beautiful morning. And in my little camping bowl right here, I've got a couple of eggs and some deer sausage cooked up on the old Coleman, baby. Hey, how about that for America? Oh, outdoor, great. Just drop my spoon in the dirt. Outdoor greatness, y'all. Getting to experience that. I'm a very blessed man. I'm a very blessed individual. Oh, I just got a better attitude about today, too. Man, I do it. Man, it's just an interesting feeling. You know, you wake up right next to the water with the birds and everything. It just kind of puts you in tune. You know, I started thinking about the bite as soon as I got up. And, you know, the lakes are right behind me. I'm going to scarf this deer sausage. A little bit of egg. Then we're going to get out of the water. We're going to have some fun. Let's go. Same creek, different attitude. Oh man, it's a beautiful morning, y'all. Already had a great morning. Just kind of camping, doing my own thing. My strategy here is I'm gonna go all the way to the back of this creek. It's a pretty good ways back here, and I'm gonna see if there's any shad that might be back there spawning. Uh, it's the time of year we see a shad spawn. If not, I'm just gonna I'm gonna throw a little top water, throw a little frog around, see if I can get anything. Look at this. Just, just smash the like button. Beautiful. Sun rises through the pine trees. <laughs> oh man, wood ducks flying. Gorgeous. It's just shallow water fishing right here, y'all. Get the basic necessities of life. Frog a jig and a swim bait or something moving. Oh god, I just ate right there. Right there on the bank revealed itself. Dirty, dirty shallows. I, I see something swirling back here. I don't know what it is. The sun isn't high enough for me to really see any bass yet. All right, well, I'll just continue with my swim bait. No luck in the back, so I'm heading out. And then as soon as I start seeing a good row of docks and some more trees around the bank and stuff, it's a good bank cover. I'm just gonna Put it down and go. Mm-hmm. Time to go to work. Check in, clock in, punch your ticket. Go to work on the water. You know what I'm saying? Clock in. That's what I'm doing. I was just talking to an old man on the dock and he was saying that uh, you know he usually waits until he sees like little bait fish being chased. And it's not bass, it's crappie, it's just little little chasers. And then he'll break out his jig and he'll throw around. So they go on little feeding sprees, little inside local knowledge. And I just saw that. I just saw one crappie come up and snag a little minnow. So I'm gonna flip around some of these docks. Here we go, baby. First crappie on. And it's a tank. Oh yeah. Got him on that little jig, baby. No doubt, that's a keeper. I'm crappy in the box, y'all. I wasn't able to get any more off the dock, so 
I'm going to keep going around. I'm going to look for more docks like this that are enclosed. Probably have a lot of brush down there. Um, but I'm going to fish for bass in between. What's crazy is they're both spawning around the same time. You know, the crappie come in a little bit beforehand. Probably about three weeks beforehand, four weeks beforehand. Um, and the bass kind of follow that. And then the catfish are after that. But um, they're right now in the same type of areas. So it's a fun time to fish for both. Oh, oh, oh. Here we go. Oh, God. Must have had a pincher. Must have had a pincher. I jerked him a little bit. That bed is stirred now. Oh, first time he exited the bed right there. Call this the crouch. Crouch attack. Don't want him to check me out. This is gonna really set the tone for the day. I've got a crappie in the box. Now I'm sitting on a bed fish. Same one from yesterday that I never caught. It's like, is this gonna be a repeat? Or am I gonna go forth and start catching some fish? That's, that's what's going through my head right now, you know? Oh God, took my whole dang thing. Throw on this prototype white bug. I doubt I'll even be able to see it, but just give it a different color, a different look here. Oh. Rushed it. Rushed it. I got a scale on him. God. There's another one right there. There's two on this bed. Or one is. The females just aren't staying on. They are cruising off. Fish does took off. Oh, that was a big freaking fish right there. Oh, God, oh, he mouthed it. Oh, finally, we got a player. Here comes the jig. Oh, it's going in your face, fish. Yep, they do not like this jig, y'all. Mm -hmm. There it goes. He's got it. Got it. Right in the top of the mouth. Oh, lead. these fish are bigger than what you think. Oh, oh my gosh. I thought that fish was two pounds. That's three and a half. <sighs> nice fish right there, y'all. Okay, just let that fish go. Go back and do its thing. Black blue jig with the bandito bug on the back. Um, dramatic difference. Every fish that I've encountered and I throw in a, a white bait or just a Texas rig, you know, bandito bug, and then I throw in the, the jig. Uh, there's something about a skirt in there. Like everything is moving around. Uh, you can just shake your rod tip and it flares and everything. They just immediately get more aggressive. So catch a crappie or two, then you see a bass, you flip to it, and then you throw some bait and maybe catch an eight pounder. I mean, this is fun stuff. I, I like this kind of fish. Okay, we're rolled up on another one here. Throw a little swim bait until I see something. And this looks like a pair, but they're not on the bed, if that makes sense. Females haven't been locked on the bed. Mm. Changing body posture, getting, getting more intense. Oh, there we go. Oh, it. Oh. Okay, this might happen again. 
Come on, got him that time. Oh, yeah, buddy. Ah, got you. Good on that jig that time. Oh, my luck has turned around today. Dark, black, lateral line bass. Mm. There's another male fish. Couldn't get the female to lock on, but a pretty one. Yeah, baby. See ya. <sighs> my luck's better. Yesterday, if I hooked one, not a chance I was gonna get it again. I'm gonna switch my trailer to this natural color because it is just a perfect bluegill imitator. Golly, what a better day. Getting fish to bite. Like picking and choosing which one I want. Side hooked, side hooked, side hooked. Oh, man, that's not the way I wanted to do it. Come here. Oh, it's a big bass. Oh, daggum. It's a fat female. Oh, I got the female, but I just saw my line moving. And she must have had it and dropped it. Fat hey. Getting ready to drop those eggs, y'all. Eggs, see those eggs coming out? Check that out. The eggs of a bass right there, y'all. See them popping out of that fish. I'll let you go spawn. What happened right there, that male picked it up. I've set the hook on him a couple of times. As soon as he uh, gets out of the bed, he drops it. And when he dropped it, he was next to the female and I stuck her. It happens. It's part of life, spawn fishing. Y'all, I just watched that bass go up and eat a turtle's face. That's to say, get out of here. Getting him all turned around now. Got him. I watched him eat it. God, these fish are bigger than they look. Count you as caught, sir. That female is still looking. You know it's full spawn when you see the females there. So for all of you that are unfamiliar with the bass spawn, the, the males come in first. They make the beds, they fan out their tails. That's why the tails get bloody. That's you hear me talk about bloody tails. That's why is because they're rubbing them on the dirt and then they try to kind of remove the top debris, silt, you know, stuff like that and get to a harder bottom. And then the females come in, they'll lay their eggs, the males fertilize them, and then the females are not there for very long. They're there for a couple of days, and then the males will end up guarding for uh, usually around a week or so. And then they, they guard those little fry till they're big enough, and then they turn around and they'll eat them. They just like change modes, and uh, the spawn's a really tough process for the bass. But the females, to watch them come up there and pair up with the males and, and, and the whole process happening and we're getting to see that right now it's really cool two beds right here right in front of me where they're both paired up they're not huge fish it's really exciting when you see like you know a 10 plus or something fanning its tail that is how it goes down y'all and you got to look for the the sandy spots you know they make it pretty obvious on most lakes they'll they'll fan out on a dark bottom and they'll expose a sandy spot and um, that's where the beds are going to be and you, you'll see old beds there's a lot of abandoned beds but just look for those areas gotta get yourself some polarized sunglasses if you're gonna sight fish and then experiment with baits every fish you come across is different just like every person it's got a different personality all right y'all i'm mean, just yet to find something that is effective at getting a reaction bite from these bedding fish than the jig this color i mean this combo it is just bluegill city that natural got a little silver belly in it and then uh, watermelon blue
What? What? What in the world? Oh my gosh. Oh god! Got him! Got him right there! On the glide bait! Holy crap! Oh my gosh! What in the world? Oh my gosh, there's another one feeding back there. Oh, holy crap, guys. I saw this bass eating at the surface. Literally just exploding on like a bluegill or something. And I threw this glide bait out, out there and it just freaking creamed it. It was one of those Weston glide baits I got in my MTB box. God, all these suckers are huge. They're all quality fish. That's like the size of the one that I'm throwing to right now. Okay, I'm ready to catch this fish now. I know you guys are too. There it goes. Oh, rushed it, and popped it. See, it's just, it's a different reaction with this jig. It really, really does not like it. Let's see how fat this fish is, man. One of these times you're gonna pop it in your mouth and I got you right there. Good fish, fat fish. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I got you on the jig. You ain't going nowhere. Mm, God. That one's a little bit bigger than the one I caught on the glide bait. They're just fatty chunks, y'all. Fatty chunks, man. Okay, y'all, we're gonna let this beautiful, fat, healthy fish go. Give it a sniff. Smell kind of weird, maybe angry. And I'm returning them to the same areas. I'm not taking these fish anywhere. Go back to your bed. You did a great job. You did a great job defending. So that's all I'm doing, guys. I'm catching these fish off beds. I'm letting them go right there so they can go back. You know, that's the thing I always think about in tournaments this time of year. You catch all those bass on beds and then you take them out of the area like, I know that probably can't be good for it, you know? Can't be good for the fishery. But this way, you can just catch them, let them go back, they'll spawn, and uh, in that case, the female wasn't even there, he was just defending, and they'll go back and they'll get bigger. Oh, there's some nice male fish out here. That one fell victim to the uh, to the white bug. Mm-hmm. I couldn't get the female. She was like six pounds. I tried. Let's see, a giant. There's an eight pounder or so. Oh my God, she's a gorilla. That could be. That could be in ten. That's a gorilla. Ooh, boy. I don't think she's gonna stay up there. But that bed has a male and then it has a gorilla. Absolute gorilla. She's back, we're gonna make a real long cast here. Oh God, she's up there on it. Hey, fish is on it. Is that her? It's a giant. Oh my God. I was looking at the male and he's big. The female is possibly a double digit. Oh my God, this is, this is a giant. Oh God, she just spooked. This is one of those you get one shot at. Oh God. He hit it. I think he's got it. He's got it. He does. I want him to drop it. Okay, he dropped it. <sighs> well, I'll just let a five, six pounder go. <laughs> Cause there is a absolute hammer dong and she is moving up now. Y'all, this is insane. My heart is pounding. I'm shaking cause this fish is so big. My 
I'm locking down the rest of the day, clearing the schedule for this fish. Got it. He's got it again. Let go. Let go. Come here, baby. She's on the bed. She's right on it. I gotta get her to bite. That's just... You only get so many opportunities. At one of these puppies. She's not too skittish. God, he's got it again. He's got it. He's got it. Let go. He's eating it like every time. She is just not reacting. She's staying there, which is awesome. Let's see if something big will get her get her a little fired up here. Did not. I think that's hurt. That is hurt. It's a, it's a giant. It's a giant. Oh, God. She's got it. It's hurt. It's a giant. Oh, oh my God. Look at the power. Oh, God. This fish is huge. This is an absolute heathen. Oh, my gosh. You're beautiful. She picked up that. Oh, God. She picked up my jig with the bandito bug. Oh, God, come here. God, you are huge. Absolute mammoth. Mammoth. Oh, come here, baby. Oh, yes. That is a freaking toad, baby. Oh, my gosh. That jig and bandito bug. Natural color. Absolute freaking mondo. Put you in here for a second, honey. Oh my god. Y'all, I'm shaking. I'm shaking. Oh my gosh, that's one of my biggest sight fish ever. Oh my gosh. Oh, the male had it five or six times. I let him go. Finally she grabbed, I couldn't tell which one. I was trying to stay so far away. And then as soon as I saw like the gorilla shadow with my line moving, I went And you guys saw the hook set. It was like I didn't even move her. Just an absolute heathen baby. <laughs> Got it on my freaking signature series rod too. Oh my God. I cannot believe it. Outdoor greatness captured. Okay, I'm pretty sure I still have scale in here and I do. Hopefully it works. Okay, let's get this puppy weighed. All right, y'all, I'm gonna weigh this fish, get a quick weight, drop it back in the live well, get a couple picks, cause you know I got to, and then we're gonna return it to the bed. God, oh, what a gorilla. Not as big as I thought, but I think it's still over eight, it's so fat. Oh, you can usually tell when they take up the entire live well what's going on. Fat, fat beast. When I saw her silhouette in the water, I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Oh, yeah, it's over 10. Easily. 10, 4. 10, 4. You don't see that? Let's get a close up on that. Ah. What was it mounting to? It says 10, 5. Locked at 10, 5. Oh, I was right. That is a double digit bass, baby. Boom! Yes! Now, quick learning lesson here. I know when you catch a huge fish, you want to get real excited, take a ton of photos, but be extremely careful with a big fish like that. They're more susceptible uh, to, to, uh, to die, really. So I'm gonna let this fish go right now. Got probably 10 pictures, you know. If I got one good one, great. And I'm gonna let this fish go right here close to the bed. 
Big Bertha. Take off into the depths for us. Oh yeah. Look at that. Wow. There we go. I'm almost, I'm almost speechless, guys. I'm almost speechless. Yesterday, I was, I was, I was really frustrated. I almost did not post that video. I'm glad I did. Last night, I was really thinking. I had a lot of time to think, sleeping in my boat, and I was like. I just did not have the correct attitude. I was getting frustrated at the fish. I was getting frustrated at myself. I was like, oh my gosh, this video is not going to be good because I'm not, I'm so close to catching fish, like so close to having a great video and it's not all coming together. And I just, I got frustrated. And anytime you get frustrated and mad and things build up inside of you and well up, you know, it just doesn't go well. You just got to release that. So, you know, I woke up this morning. I didn't even get out on the water first thing. I made myself a good breakfast and I just, I just prayed. I was like, you know what? I just need a good day, but no matter what, I'm going to have a better attitude. What a difference today. I'm just having fun. Things just started clicking, you know, and I just really had a good attitude. And I was just, even before that fish, I was like, God, thank you. Thank you, Lord. It just feels good. It feels good to be in a good mood. Good things happen when you're in a good mood, guys. And that is one of my biggest bass ever. And my biggest bass of the year, for sure. So I'm just feeling very blessed right now. Feeling good. Thought I'd share my inner feelings with you. I almost shed a tear, decided to hold back. Hit the like button. If you don't, you're just a bad individual. That was just, that was too good. That was almost too good to be true. I'm not even gonna say, let's go get another one. Oh. <sighs> I might even go crop fish. God dang. I love you guys. I'm glad you got to witness that. I'm glad I got to catch that fish. Mm. Oh, I forgot to give it a sniff. Dang God. Well, I've given it another 30 minutes and um, you know, there was some small bass on beds. You know, I made some flips there uh, up there in that creek. There was a lot of fish moving around. Nothing biting on moving baits on the outside. It's really just sight fishing. And you know, they weren't huge. I think they were like three, four pounders. Uh, one maybe been a, a little bit bigger than that. I just thought, you know what? I'd rather end my day on a 10 pounder. That sounds pretty good and get an early start on my journey over to Lake Fork. So that is exactly what I'm going to do, y'all. I'll leave links down below if you guys want to check out the Signature Series 7.2 Medium Heavy Rod. This is what I use to uh, flip. This is what, uh, not like heavy stuff. This is what I use to do roll casts and I'm throwing spinner baits, chatter baits. I'm throwing jigs up to half ounce like this. Uh, Texas rigs, I do a ton of stuff with it. Um, it is a really, really good action. So. We've got that down there, um, Guggen Baits, if you guys want to check out the Bandito Bug. Excelente jig trailer. Um, I'll leave a tip on my Instagram on how I rigged that on my jig, but just a couple of modifications and that thing is dirty. I'm going to take the crappie, I'm going to put it in my cooler, and hopefully add to the collection tomorrow, and then take a bunch of meat back to OSG. Uh, man. You guys better go ahead and smash the like button for just good vibes, starting the day with good vibes, continuing on, and then voila, the double digit happens, man. Good attitude. If, if I've, I've learned nothing else more than today, I'm, I'm going to remember this day forever, but it's keep a good positive attitude, good things will happen. Subscribe right here so you don't miss the next dangle. And I love you guys. I will see you.